Today's Quick Tip Tuesday comes to you from our Facebook group. About once a month, once every five or six weeks, I invite all of the gals inside of the group to ask any questions they have. And so today, we're talking to Tammy and to Lisa, and they are wondering how you choose curtains. They want to make sure that they choose the right curtains for their space. And spoiler alert, it is not all about the curtains. In fact, curtains are the last thing we talk about. Before we even get there, we want to talk about the rod and the finial, the teeny tiny little end cap at the end of the rod that makes a dramatic statement. Because honestly, it acts like a piece of jewelry. And so we talk about all of that and I'm connecting a couple YouTube videos, uh, resources that I created a year or so ago so that you can have that access to in case you need a visual. These have visuals for you, so I will connect those in the show notes. And if you're at a spot where you are wanting to pick out curtains for your space and you're just not entirely sure, I encourage you to book a call. Sometimes having a designer in your pocket, a designer to talk to, someone to run something by, to ask that question, to get that second opinion that is not the person you're sharing your space with, sometimes that is more valuable than you will realize. All right, if that would be helpful for you, go to figandfarmathome.com forward slash book a call and you can just book right there. All right, you're going to hear part two of this Ask a Designer. You're going to hear that next week when we talk about how to pick the right chandelier for your space. Enjoy today's show. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at Fig and Farm at home at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there. bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. All right, you guys, happy Friday. I hope you are all gearing up for a wonderful long weekend. And if you are about to do any home projects, yay, there are sales to be had. Make sure you check those out. I didn't do any roundup so that you would know where to go, but I know that there are because Memorial Day is a great time to um, buy the sale item. So if you are Tammy or Talisa or Aaron, who have asked these questions specifically about curtains and um, chandeliers, check this weekend because there are sales. I was looking for a client for chandeliers just last night and you could save hundreds of dollars. So now's the time. And I do want to see what you choose. So let me know. Okay. We're going to get to Tammy's question. And she says, is there a general rule of thumb when hanging curtains? I know they shouldn't brush the floor, but how far away from the window width wise should they drape? And Talisa is wondering the same thing because she's about to buy curtains too. So there's a lot of information here, girls. It is so much more nuanced than just go to Target or Walmart or Home Goods and find the curtain. In fact, before you do that, I want you to stop <laughs> and don't do that. Here's why. The cautionary tale here is that most curtains, when you buy them over the rack at a big box store, they are going to be too short. And one of the most common design faux pas that you see is when you have a curtain that hangs just below um, the, the bottom of the window. Um, sometimes you can get away with it if you have a radiator that's right there, but even then it might be better to just get a bamboo shade rather than a curtain. So um, so that's your cautionary tale. Don't buy it over the, over the counter, over, over the counter. Don't buy it at a big box store unless they have, um, higher sizes. You are generally going to need a longer length. Even if you have standard eight foot ceilings, an 84 inch curtain, which is generally what's sold. Um, I want to keep saying over the counter, but you know what I mean? Um, at Target, off the shelf is what I'm saying. Um, at Target, at Walmart, at Home Goods, those off the shelf items are 84 inches, and that is not long enough to um, to help you get the right curtain length for a standard eight foot ceiling. So, how do you do it? It's so there's so much information. Now, before you go buy the curtain, stop there too. <laughs> you know you're not going to go to the box store. 
but I want you to think about the rod. The rod is actually critical to think about before you buy the curtain, because we need to know where to hang it before we choose the correct length. So here's what to think about for the rod. If you have, um, generally speaking, if you have a, a standard eight foot high ceiling and your window goes up to what, seven feet, that's gonna give you about 12 inches between the edge of the window and the ceiling height. Sometimes if you hang, uh, I like to just split the difference, honestly. I like to just put the rod right in the middle um, or thereabouts. Hanging it directly at the top of the, the window ledge, that's too low. Hanging it completely at the height of the ceiling, sometimes that feels a little bit wonky to me. So do look at that and play with that and you can do it before you um, screw any of those screws into the wall. So have hubby and your kiddo hold those for you so that you can see, does that look quite right? Does that look quite right? But generally, I always start with splitting the difference. If I'm going to go either way, I will go up rather than down. So keep that in mind. The other thing I want you to think about too is when it is time to hang your curtain rod, I want you to think about the height of the window. Think about that. And I want you to think about the corner edges. So from that corner edge, I want you to measure six inches out and six inches high. And where those two lines intersect, that is the starting point. Now you can do that anywhere from six inches out and six in inches up to 12 inches out and 12 inches up. Sometimes when you have a wider window, um, or, you know, when you have that curtain uh, at that wider length, that 12 inch, you might need an extra drape. You might need an extra panel because you want it to billow on the side as it's, as it's hanging on the side of the window, as much as you have it billow when it goes and pulled flat. So um, that's tricky. Did that make sense? Let me say that again. When you have your curtain open, you, it will billow, right? On the side, it just will kind of naturally flow, you want it to have as much flow, or it's not just going to be as much, but you don't want it to sit completely flat when you close the curtain. That's going to be an indicator that you might need to get an extra panel or two. Okay, if your curtains, however, are just flanking the windows, um, then that will be fine because you're not going to be worrying about closing them. They're just going to billow naturally. Okay, so that is how high you want to think about it. And one thing I want you to think about too are the finials at the end of your rod. So if you're thinking about rod naturally, you wanna make sure that it will extend six inches out or 12 inches, anywhere between six and 12 inches from the edge of your window on either side. And that's gonna be the length of the curtain rod you need. Of course, a lot of those are extendable. So generally speaking, it will, you'll get one that will extend. Um, keeping in mind that if you have a longer window, you're going to need the um, anchors at both ends and probably in the middle, because if it's supporting the weight in the middle, you're going to need that anchor in the middle. Okay, back to finials. Finials are the teeny tiny little end caps that um, cap the end of your rod. And those finials are really important. They are so important, you guys. They are like jewelry for your home's design. And so if they are like jewelry for your home's design, they have a personality and they have, they speak loudly, even though they're so teeny tiny. So imagine if your home is a little bit more modern farmhouse and you go and you get um, the scrolly, um, like kind of cast iron scrolly work, your curtain rod is automatically going to be betraying you <laughs> because that is, that finial is not a, um, a representation of the aesthetic that you have. So pay attention to that because those finials can date your home, either, you know, more modern or more traditional, and they really have a personality of their own. Okay, now onto the curtain. So you've done a lot of work already. You've gotten the rods and then you've gotten um, the finials and you're thinking about that height. For the curtains themselves, we know getting them off the shelf at a box store is probably not going to be beneficial for the length of your curtain that, that you really need. Generally speaking, once we know where we're hanging the curtain rod, then we can measure from there down to the floor. How high is that? If you are in a traditional eight foot home or a standard eight foot home, that's about 96 inches. And I have not run into yet where you can go into a store and get a 96 inch curtain off the shelf. 
uh, Pier 1 used to have them, but I don't think there's any Pier 1s anymore. Um, you might check places like World Market, but the place I go to over and over and over again is Ikea. And I do that not only because of the length, but because of the quality for the price point. And I know that I can get a quality curtain for really inexpensive. The, the minute you start adding length and width to your curtain panels, the price goes up. And we can get those, but it's going to be at a higher cost. Um, you know, I, sometimes like $120 a panel, you know, $300 for a pair of curtains. And if that's your price point, fantastic. There are so many options for you. If that is not, and if you are wanting to stay on a budget, Ikea is a great place to, to shop. They have plenty of options. Um, okay, let's talk about this for just a second, because if you do find yourself and you're looking at this and you're thinking, I don't have, I'm not going to be purchasing curtains. That's not you know, in the plan right now, but, oh gosh, I actually, oh, I had the short ones. What can I do to remediate them? A couple things that you can do, you can add an extra um, piece of fabric at the bottom. You can make it look like it is um, color blocked. And that can be a really fun, easy way to, to make your curtain length fit for you. Of course, that requires sewing. So if you know how to sew. Yay. Welcome to the club. I'm so glad you do. Um, sew that on or ask a friend, maybe your mom knows how, and maybe she'd love to help you with that. Sometimes you're just missing an inch or two. And one thing that you can do is you can take your curtain off of the rod. Maybe it's draped through the back. Um, and you can instead have, um, the little circle clips and that can extend the length even by a couple inches. So that's a, a good kind of cheat way to do it. Now, let's say the flip side is you get the curtain and it's 96 inches, but gosh, it's just a teeny tiny little bit too long. How can you make it shorter without sewing if you're not a seamstress? If you're not a seamstress, no worries. Go to your craft store, go to Joann's, Michael's, wherever you go, um, and you can get a um, an iron-on hem tape. And you just basically, like it sounds, you just iron it on, and that will make it look like you have um, the iron or the, the sewn hem. Um, what else to think about for curtains? So Tammy, you said, I know that they shouldn't brush the floor. Actually, they can brush the floor. So um, brushing the floor is fine. Pooling on the floor is fine. Or even sitting probably around like your baseboard um, somewhere, not above your baseboard, but somewhere in the middle of your baseboard would be okay. And that's dependent on you. Of course, all of these are guidelines. It really is dependent on on you. And if you like the short curtain, fantastic, go with the short curtain. But if you want to um, have the, the pooling a little bit, not at all, if you want it to be sitting above your baseboard, if that's what you like, fantastic. Just remember that homes don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And if you love it, that's fantastic. But the guideline would be sit um, about halfway in your baseboard, brushing the floor or pooling even. Um, I have animals. I don't want it to pool. They sit behind those curtains all the time. <laughs> and it's really cute. Actually, I do. I, I do have pooling curtains in my bedroom and I do actually like it. I think it's really sweet, but it just means I have to be creative with how to get the, that kitty fur off. Um, cause I love those kitties. Okay. Tammy, I hope that answered your question, your question to Lisa too. Um, I am going to post in the comments. I'm going to post a couple resources I have for you. Uh, I created a curtain guide that answers all of these same questions and what to think about. It's hosted on YouTube. So there are three short videos. Yes, short, I promise, about four or five minutes each. And it walks you through examples of finials, examples of rods, examples of curtains, all that. Um, so if I missed anything, it's probably in there. So I will link that below and you can find it there. And there you have it wrapping up on the first part of Ask the Designer from the Facebook group. Next week, we are going to tackle the second part, which is how do you choose the right chandelier? I love these questions and I encourage you to reach out if you have any. We're kind of running out. So if I don't have any more questions coming up, that might be a good indicator that Fig and Farm at Home needs to take a summer break on Quick Tip Tuesday. So if you want to continue hearing these quick tips, I need some questions in order to answer. You can send those to me via email fig and farm at home at gmail.com pop into my dms at fig and farm 
or join the Facebook group and ask there. My mailbox is open and I can't wait to hear from you. And if your question isn't about a designing question, you want to know a little bit more about who the designer is behind Fig and Farm at Home or any of the behind the scenes questions, ask away. I'm an open book. All right, until next time, I'll see you soon.